Okay, my friends, part one then says comment on the actions that should be taken by the auditor. That's one, so what should we do? And then the implications for the auditor's report. So let's have a look what's happened then. You're the manager responsible for the audit of Dillon, which is a listed company, so important. You're reviewing the working papers of the audit file for September 12th. The audit senior has left you a note. There's a date. Be careful of the date. Dillon Company outsources its payroll, invoicing and credit control functions to Hendrix. And in August 12th, so what, a month before the year end, Hendrix suffered a computer virus attack on its operating system resulting in the destruction of its accounting records, including those that we need for Dylan. We have therefore been unable to perform the planned audit procedures on payroll, revenue and receivables, all of which are material. Hendrix has ma manually reconstructed the relevant figures as far as possible and has supplied a written statement to confirm that they are as accurate as possible given the loss of accounting records. So, first of all, I think it's obvious, isn't it, that we have a lack of audit evidence on the three things payroll, revenue and receivables. So that's the issue. What actions could we take? Well, what about, uh, what have they done so far? What about Hendrix, um, what did they say uh, they've supplied a written statement. So Hendrick's written statement. Do you think that's enough? You think, okay, they say it, that's all right. Obviously, not enough. We're the ones who's responsible, okay? So therefore, we need to do more procedures. So there's one of the actions. We need to do more procedures. Now, if we need to do more procedures, this is P7. So you have to say, well, what more procedures? Uh, and again, you use the scenario a little bit. So the scenario says that what Hendrix are trying to do, they're trying to reconstruct. So do more procedures on the reconstruction. Obviously, we'll need to get permission for that. So maybe that's okay. Also, look at the date. It's only one month. So maybe we ought to check to see if one month maybe is not material. You know, it might be that we can do so much work on the, on the other 11 months that the one month is immaterial and so we don't have to do that many more procedures. If we're doing more procedures then, the other action we should take is seek a extension to the deadline or to any deadlines in order for us to do more of this before we give our audit opinion. And I guess that they would go along with it, wouldn't they? Because they don't want you to give a modified opinion. So I guess that they would go along with that. So uh, that's that. And then it says, the other part says, what about the implications for the audit report? So we have insufficient evidence, and this should be straightforward knowledge work, really, for those of you who have looked at the audit report so far, or can remember it from F8. So insufficient evidence, if it's material, what we do is we give an except for. So we say except for payroll, receivables, and um, I forgot what the other one now was, revenue, wasn't it? Yeah, except for those, everything else seems to be okay. So an except for paragraph. But if it's material and pervasive, and those three are big things, aren't they? If it's material and pervasive, then we have to give a disclaimer which says we are unable to give our opinion okay all of this comes before the opinion paragraph and we talk about the you know we, de we describe what's happened we describe why we describe the circumstances of what has happened, okay? And then the final thing you should do, if you're ever going to modify your report, you should tell somebody, tell those charged with governance, because they may be able, if it's not the, if it's not the management, if it's somebody higher, they may be able to give additional evidence somehow. Give us additional help, 
because they won't want, particularly as listed, you know, they're listed, so it's really important. So they might be able to help us a little bit more because they don't want a qualified opinion to begin with. So I think that's about it. So again, you know, we, we commented on the actions. What we did was we used the scenario. We kind of got into the scenario ourselves. And then finally, there's a little bit of knowledge work on the audit report. Part two then says, discuss the quality control procedures that should be carried out prior to issuing the report. Okay, now, if you are a listed company, then in terms of quality control, you need an engagement, quality, control, review, and in fact, you need to appoint a reviewer, an engagement, quality, reviewer. And what will happen is the engagement partner, the person who's doing the audit, he or she will discuss any significant matters with the engagement quality control reviewer, obviously before giving their opinion. Okay, What else the engagement quality control reviewer will do is he or she will review the financial statements and obviously the report, the audit report that we are suggesting. They will be looking to see is the opinion appropriate? So they will also, in this case, look for additional procedures that we might have done or do. Okay, particularly here, he will be thinking is it M or is it M and P? Is it material or is it material and pervasive? Also, Good quality control, as we know, is all about documentation, isn't it? Particularly, we want documentation about the issue, about the key issue, and about the judgments that we've made when coming to our opinion, whether it's material and pervasive. Okay, And then the audit is obviously signed after the engagement quality control review. So that last bit really, only three marks, and it was very much uh, knowledge-based, really. Okay, hope it helps.